Hey, it's Scott with Pop Pops Wood Shop. Uh, this video is going to be part two of sublimation on wood. Trying to get a better look, one that I'm happy with. So the product I chose is, however you pronounce that, I'm not going to even try. Amazon, I'll put a link in the description. Um, it met the budget because I wasn't going to spend a hundred dollar bill on an, on an experiment. So this was like 22 bucks if I remember right. <coughs> so what you get in the package is your coating, your activator, small cup, small syringe, another small syringe, foam brush, a stir stick, and a little cleaning pad. It is a mix. It is 20 to 1 ratio. Um, the very first warning is on their box is, hey, this stuff is kind of pungent. Well, it is. It, it, no doubt about it. So I would use it in a well-ventilated area. Um, I'm going to read the directions to you because there's some things in here that I'm just not happy about. Um, mixing. Add one milliliter of activator, the small bottle per 20 milliliters of sublimation coating, the big bottle, for a 1 to 20 ratio to stir thoroughly. Clean your product. Clean your substrate. Well, okay, that should be a given. Curing. Once dry, cure the substrate in an oven at 380 degrees for 7 minutes. Let it cool down before you apply. Okay, they're talking about a ceramic mug. That's what they're talking about. They haven't even talked about wood yet, and I'll get to that. Pressing. Press the mug 200 to 250 seconds with medium pressure at 380 degrees. They highly recommend using a circuit mug press. It applies the correct amount of pressure and heat automatically. Okay, so keep that in mind because we're going to get to their disclaimer here in a moment. Uh, okay, here we go. Keep keep in mind, sublimation in general takes practice, so don't give up on the first try. Our product has been tested on many mugs, tumblers, wood products, and it works like magic. If you are not achieving good results, then you could, re then you could be related to the ink, the sublimation paper, and mainly the heat and press you are using. Here's our escape clause. It didn't work because you're using something that we didn't recommend. Uh, if you have questions on how to use the product, please do not hesitate to contact us. Our support team is standing by to assist me. I bet. So, long story short, we're going to mix some of this up. Seeing as how wood is a guess. The best way I can say it. Um... I'm going to mix some up. I'm going to apply it to the wood. I'm going to give it, you know, 20 minutes to dry. And then I'll take it down to the office and I'll put it in the oven. I'm going to bake it. I'm going to start. And I'm going to make my notes. I'm going to start at 7 minutes at that temperature that they listed in their directions. And see what happens. Hopefully it won't catch fire. I don't know. We'll find out. All right, let me get started on the sanding and uh, the prep work. I'll be back. Okay, we're back. I have poured 10 milliliters into this container. I am going to draw up a half a milliliter of the activator, apply it to the coating. It's very thin. It's not pasty at all. It's kind of thin. A little bit thicker than water, I would say. So let's draw up our stuff here. This is thick. This has the consistency of uh, epoxy, I would say. So let me get down to a half. This is graduated in point. Uh, 1 through point 
and basically it's once you use throw it away this you have it says in the directions you have one hour working time um, which that's fine but it also says in the bottle if you don't keep it closed it will go hard fairly quickly so we'll seal it up and then this will be trashed okay let's stir it up I've already sanded my cherry down to 360 so what I'm seeing is unlike epoxy um, there's no change in consistency I can I can see a little bit of murkiness which is I would think the activator but there's no way for me to tell you hey stir for this amount of time and it's mixed because I can't tell in their directions it says wear, wear gloves because it's very sticky and uh, I would and I am still pretty thin pretty thin mix okay let's apply some to our wood and see what we get so it's currently 7 a.m. So at 7.20 ish, I will take this to the office, put it in an oven, and see what happens. And a little bit goes a long way, I can already tell you that. So I'm glad I only mixed that little bit, and it does have an odor to it. It says in the directions that the odor will not hurt you. The, that smell, okay. Well, I don't think it'd be good to breathe it, but I got a fan blowing here down below me to push the fumes that way, so. All right, it's fully covered, and I haven't hardly used any. So, I'm going to smooth it out just like I would paint. I would think that would make a difference on the quality of the finish all right that is done took less than a minute so 30 seconds to do that I'm gonna let this dry for 10 minutes I'll take it down to the office by the time the oven heats up whatnot it'll be about a 20 minute drying time and then uh, I'm gonna try it first at the recommended temperature that they're doing ceramic at seven minutes in the oven see what happens that's all I can do I got no reference to wood whatsoever so there we go off to the races I'll be back okay before I take it down to the office I wanted to go over the parameters I used last time are the exact same I'm going to use this time so no difference in the test per se um, image is the same the ink is the same the printer is the same the paper is the same the only difference will be this chemical this will be the image I'm using uh, for this image I'm using Inkscape software to generate it to get it to the correct size to put it on that wood so I will print this I will let that dry and then we'll put it all together and see what we get okay we're here at the oven it's up to temperature this is very shiny and I don't know what that's gonna do to our image won't know until we till we do it I'm gonna use this piece of uh, butcher paper to protect the bottom side of it because that's where that other graphic is we'll put it in there for 10 minutes or seven minutes I stand corrected and uh, go from there so let's do it it's in the oven we got about six minutes to go and uh, we'll take it out see what we get it dried for a little bit over 20 minutes and it was dried to the touch when I started at 20 minutes 
So we'll see. Okay. We're about a minute into the process and I can literally see bubbles coming up on the wood. Now, I don't know if that's moisture being pulled out of the wood or if that's moisture from the um, compound, but you can definitely see it. Now, another question I have is once I put my graphic on, I usually seal my stuff with lacquer. I don't know if it's going to have a reaction with that or not. We'll find out. Okay, we've reached our time. We're going to take it out, see what we get. Now, if these bubbles don't lay down, I would say this is going to be a catastrophic fail. I don't know if you can see those bubbles on there. But it is super bubbly. So we'll let this cool off and uh, see what it does. If it remains bubbly after it cools off, I will uh, I'll sand it all down and I'll do it again. I'll give it longer to drive dry. I'll give it an hour instead of 30 minutes. It does say in their directions that you can give it 24 hours. It's the same as curing it in the oven. So we'll see. Okay, so I've, it's cooled off a little bit. So I take my hand and I just rub across it to see how rough it feels. It's very rough. Uh, the bubbles burst as soon as I touch them. They, there's no wetness. It's dry, but I'm just breaking the bubbles off as I brush it. So that's not a good sign. Well, I don't know if you can see it well in the camera, but it's full of bubbles. So she's cooled off quite a bit. She's still a little warm, but what I'm going to do, just for the sake of weird science, I'm going to sand this with some 600, see if I can slick it up. If I can slick it up without removing that coating, then uh, I'll try to press on that graphic and at least see if it works or not. And, you know, it is what it is. Okay. I sanded it down. It's smooth again. The coating is still on there. I can see it. So I'm going to heat the press up to 380 at their suggestion. And I'm going to hit it for 200 seconds. That is the starting point. So, you know, not real sure why the bubbling was occurring. I reached out to them on, on their chat session on their website. They haven't responded yet, so kind of waiting to see what they have to say about that. I am not using the Cricut pad. I'm using Nomex, which is firmer, to get the better press. And we'll just see what happens when we do this. And we're up to 260, so it's going to be a minute. Okay. It's done. 200 seconds, 380 degrees. This is the image. I don't know if you can see it. But you can see the bubble marks are still there. You can still see them. So this ghosting effect all the way around it, I kind of like it. I could never duplicate it because I've sanded this and playing with it, trying to get, figure it out. But I like that, that effect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray this with some lacquer. See if it holds up to lacquer. See if I can slick it off so you won't be able to see those bubble pop marks. We'll try that. Now, that's a heck of a lot of effort to go through for each piece of wood. There's got to be an easier, better way. We'll keep trying. Okay, I'm going to put lacquer over this, see if we have any chemical reaction. I use deft um, satin for this, and we'll see, see what happens.
So initially, no reaction. Now hopefully, this will lay down in the recessed pockets of that bubbling, and then I'll hit it with 600 again after I do a couple coats, just like I do any other wood finish, and it'll slick off, and then uh, maybe it'll look good. We'll see. So I'm going to give this two, three coats, give it a little bit of time to dry, and I'll work on it. We'll see what we get for results. Okay, lacquer's dry. No reaction. That's good. It is a nice sheen. I like the end result, but I believe there's got to be an easier way to get here. It's just too labor-intensive, takes too long, too many variables, so I'm, I'm hoping that when these people reach back to me regarding the bubbling issue, um, that we'll get something figured out. I just, you know, to me, surely to God they've run tests on the wood and the, and the other metals and what have you. They ought to offer me some guidance. Uh, I don't know. I, I just, I don't know. We'll, we'll, play with this a little bit more I'll do a couple more tests uh, probably with it Just different times different different temperatures that sort of thing see if I can get that bubbling to stop and because uh, that would that would take a lot of it out of the equation if if I don't have to come back and re-sand the coating then you know that's a big time saver by itself and i don't know am i getting it sanded off evenly is that why i'm having the uh, diffused look on the outer ring i think it probably is but i don't know that for a fact so anyway we'll uh you know my, my end two cents on this is that I, I got a bunch more testing to do. I'm, it's inconclusive at this point. I just don't know if I'm going to use this product long term or am I going to try something else? I don't know. Um, I would I would prefer a one part product to lay it down on it, let it dry, do whatever I need to do, whether I have to cure it or what have you, and then do the sublimation because when you're when you're making these trying to make money i can't afford to spend three hours on this type of project you know i got a whole bunch of other things i could do so anyway i'll let you know what i find out and how this all ends